What will be the next shoe to drop? When will it happen? And most importantly, will you be prepared? Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a prepper pantry haul to share with you. We keep getting hit in the face with reminders of why we need to be prepared for anything at any moment. We've seen a lot of things go down lately, including devastating hurricanes, the possibility of supply chain breakdowns, and brewing political tensions. You never know when you could be left without power, possibly unable to leave your home for some reason, Maybe the stores are closed or picked clean. It could also be a personal level crisis. I've heard from so many people who lost their job, had to deal with maybe cancer or another serious illness or injury, and they were only able to get through it because they had their food storage and supplies to rely on. If you haven't started prepping, it's never too late to begin, and it doesn't have to be difficult or expensive. It can be done many ways and at any pace. Be sure to follow the principle of store what you use and use what you store so nothing goes to waste. A good friend of mine always says the worst time to prepare for a disaster is when you're in the middle of one. So the time to move is now. Let's jump right in and I'll show you what we recently added to our preps and supplies and why. All right, so starting over here, I've got some canned goods. I've got some canned evaporated milk. I've got regular cans that are just Walmart brand. And then Carnation makes these little five ounce cans, which I like to have on hand because sometimes you just need a little bit, um, either for a recipe or for whatever you're using it for. And you don't want to have a whole extra can to store, especially if you were in an emergency situation and you didn't have um, refrigeration. But these are great for lots of different recipes that use um, some sort of dairy product you can use these in. Um, you can put these in your coffee if, or tea if you like cream in that. Lots of different uses for these and they're shelf stable for many years. I will say they're not my favorite milk product to have in my prepper pantry, but I do use these and they're good to have. I used a lot of evaporated milk when I did my Great Depression era meals in a bag emergency meal kits. So you can check out that video if you're interested. Next, I've got a bunch of fun um, shelf-stable canned meat products, and most of these kind of stem from that same Great Depression meal video. This is just some dried beef, otherwise known as chipped beef, is what I always called it. Um, it's just dried, salted slices of beef in a jar, and this is shelf-stable. These are good for, um, the dates on them are good for at least two years, and like anything else, they're going to be good long after the dates have gone by, as long as the jar stays intact. This makes a great um, chip beef over toast, which is something that I used to have when I was a kid sometimes when we weren't vegetarians. And I also did that as one of my Great Depression meals. It was super simple and super yummy. And then I've got all of these Spams or luncheon meat. Now, when I did that same Great Depression um, meal video, I used Spam or luncheon meat. This is just Walmart's version of Spam basically. And it's actually really good. I typically don't buy the spam brand because I like this just fine and it's much cheaper. Now of course we all know that this is not the healthiest product you can eat or have on hand but I believe in all things in moderation. It's tasty, it's shelf stable for a good long time, it is going to give you some protein. Of course it has some non-desirable ingredients but I think it's good to have on hand. And I mentioned when I did my video on this about all the different flavors you could get and all the different varieties so I thought it would be fun to pick up one of every kind that I could find at my Walmart. So, so like I mentioned, the Great Value brand um, is right here. They don't have as many flavors. Actually, they do have this flavor that I forgot to stick in here. They have bacon flavored, but they do have just original flavor. They also have a light, which is lower fat and calories. So it's made with pork and chicken. They have a lower sodium version that you can get. And then this one is the regular original style, but it's a smaller can which is super cute. It's a little seven ounce can. So if you're prepping for one or two people, this might be great for you. It's about the size of the can that they have at Dollar Tree, I believe, but I do not like Dollar Tree's luncheon meat. It's not very tasty. This one is really good. And then for some of the more interesting flavors, I had to go with the Spam brand that was more and more expensive, but we've got maple flavored, um, Korean barbecue, hickory smoke, teriyaki, this would be great in a teriyaki spam fried rice with pineapple and all kinds of stuff like that. Hot and spicy and jalapeno. I'm not sure how those are different. Obviously, 
just different ways of making them spicy. And then I actually also found this one that's not, it's um, imitation meat. It's plant-based meat. So I thought this was interesting. I do have a daughter who likes to eat vegetarian. So I thought I would grab one of these as well. So now we have a good representation of different spams or luncheon meats that are available. Let me know down in the comments any flavors that you've seen that I don't have here because this is just what I was able to find at my Walmart. And then of course I also have grabbed four of these corned beef because these are really good. I love um, corned beef. I really love corned beef a lot. It's one of my favorite meats. This also is not going to be the healthiest option but I really like it and I like to have it on hand. We don't eat things like that often but especially in an emergency if you wanted some comfort food I would really like this. I even made a St. Patrick's Day corned beef and cabbage boiled dinner meal in a bag emergency meal kit to have on the shelf because you never know when you might be in an emergency situation during the holidays. Then behind there I just have two packages of this toilet paper. This is my favorite toilet paper to grab. Um, it's only two packages. These are really big packages. 30 mega rolls. This to me has been the best um, deal I can find on toilet paper usually, even compared to the warehouse clubs. And I don't need to tell you why we stock up on toilet paper. It seems no matter what's happening, the first thing people run for is toilet paper. So you wanna make sure you always have plenty on hand so you just stay out of that mess. Here I've got a few more little interesting things from Amazon. These are a couple of phone chargers. Now your phone is actually one of your most important EDC tools you have. Most of us always have our phone on us. And it's really, really important if you think about it. It's our way of communication. So it's a communication device. It's a flashlight. It's got navigation on it. It's a tracking device. It's got all sorts of tools on it. So it's really important to keep it charged. So I got these for my vehicle. I needed a new charging cable for my vehicle anyways because my other one was so old it was barely working. It wasn't charging quickly and it would just literally fall out of the bottom of the phone. The connection had gotten so loose from being old. So I needed a new cable and I really wanted something retractable because I just got sick of the cable just kind of hanging in the car all the time when it wasn't being used. So I haven't had great experience in the past with rechargeable with retractable chargers because usually they're not very good quality so they don't charge quickly at all. They charge very slowly. But I figured technology is always advancing and they're always making new products. So I figured that maybe I should try one again. And I'm super happy that I did. So I've got these two. This one is what I'm using for my phone. It's got USB-C on both ends. So it's super fast charging. And to retract or pull it out, you just pull on both ends. So it has three lengths. This is the first length. And this first length is actually the perfect distance to um, reach from my charging port in my car to my phone when it's in its phone holder. So it's perfect. So you can either pull it to the next length if you want or just give it a small tug and let it go in and it retracts back down to like this. So this has been perfect. When I'm not using my charger, I just retract it and it sits right down there. It's not in the way. I only have one of these here to show you, but I did buy two because it was on sale like 50% off and it was such a good deal that I grabbed two. I figured I could return them if I didn't like it. I do like it. So I'm going to hold on to the other one. I don't know if I'm going to use it somewhere or just hold on to it for when this one gets old because it's inevitable. Any charger cord is going to get old and stop working as well. This one I got because it has all the different ends on it. So this one can be used by um, anybody else who's riding in the car, depending on what type of phone they have, like my kids or anybody else who rides with me. So on this end, it does have the USB-C. But if you don't have a port for that, it also has an adapter that's attached. So you could plug it into the regular USB. And then on this end, it has all three different kinds of cables. So it has the regular USB, the USB-C, and the um, iPhone type of cord. And I did plug this in and try it, and it works great. It charges just as fast as this one, at least on my phone. I, didn't, I tried it with the USB-C end here and the USB-C end here. I haven't had anyone else try it with their iPhone or anything, but I think it'll work the same. The only thing I don't love about this one is that it's not as compact as this one because of these three ends. So they stick out a lot more. But for in my car, it's going to be fine. It still stays right down in the spot where I need it to be. And it's just out of the way. And then I grabbed this, which is something I'm super excited about. This is something I picked up during Amazon. I think it's Prime Days. I posted a bunch of different deals on in my deals and steals group on facebook and this was one of the deals that i posted so this is a butane stove 
So it's similar, a similar type of stove to what I use in a lot of my videos and what I use in my home if the power's out because we have an electric stove. The one that I have that I use inside, I love. Um, it has a case, so it's pretty, pretty easy to store, but it's, it's not as compact as this, which is going to be good for stashing maybe in my vehicle or um, taking camping, any place that you need to save space. Or if you live in a smaller space and you just look for more compact gear. So what you do with this, it's all stored inside this cylindrical case. I did notice right here that it actually has a bottle opener on it, which is interesting. I think that's a bottle opener. I mean, I think it serves as a leg of the stove, but it's also looks like it's made to be a bottle opener. So you just open this case up right here. And then this is the stove mechanism right here that comes out like this. You can stand it up like this. And then these other two legs or whatever you want to call this open up like that. And this is your burner right here. And this is nice and sturdy. I have seen people even um, put a canning pot on a stove like this. You can see the little igniter here. You would put the fuel, the butane fuel can would go right in here. This is what a butane fuel can looks like. This is one that I have been using um, in my house. You can do your research. I have decided for myself that butane is something that I am comfortable cooking with inside, indoors. Um, a lot of people use it as an indoor cooking fuel, but do your own research and decide if that's something that's for you. This stove could also be used outdoors. Butane is really um, a pretty stable fuel to store. You can store these canisters for a long time and it's pretty safe to store these as well. But you would put the butane canister right into there and that's how you would run your stove. Now this particular stove, for some reason, it gives the energy output in watts and not BTUs. I know that the stove I use all the time is around, I think, 8,000 BTUs or 7,000. This is 2,600 watts. So I looked it up and it says that's just over 8,000 BTUs, around 88 something. So this is going to be plenty, plenty powerful to cook anything because that's the same as the stove that I already have. And then, of course, when you're done cooking with this, you just... Put it all back together and you have, this is about the size of a water bottle, um, you know, like a refillable water bottle. And this is something that you can easily store away or stash anywhere that you might need a butane stove. The next thing I got here, this is a, it's called Empty Every Drop. And this is meant to, it's like a coupler for different types of bottles. Um, I'm going to use it on a lotion bottle first, but it can be used on condiments or any type of things where you want to empty out every last bit and you need to let it set for a while so that it can drip down slowly. I do not like to waste and so I do like to get out every last drop and I was hoping something like this existed so I searched and I found it and I'm really glad that I did. Every penny that we save is another penny we can invest in our preps. Next I've got some things for canning and food prep. You know how important that I believe canning is for prepping because it helps you put up your own food and make it shelf stable. It's a really cost effective way to do things like that. And in an emergency, in a grid down emergency, it could really be a lifesaver because it can help you to be able to preserve the food from your freezers if you're going to lose it. So the first thing I got here is this canning lid rack. This was a really good price on this. I've had my, this on my wish list forever and I saw that it was on sale. I think it still is. I'm going to have links to everything I show down in the description box below the video so that you can go check them out. And hopefully some of these deals that I got are still going to be active. But this is to hold if you put your lids in um, hot water before you use them, which I know Ball now says you don't need to do that. I still do it when I am water bath canning. I don't usually do it for pressure canning, but I do do it when I'm water bath canning. So this is going to make my life so much easier. I do have the magnetic lid fisher thing, but that to me is just kind of a pain in the butt. So this, you can see it stands your lids up and it will lower right down into the pot of water. So you can pull them all out with the handle and they'll all be right there ready to grab. So if you still put your lids in hot water, this might be something you might be interested in. And then up here, I've got a couple of different canning funnels. Now, this is something also that I've had on my wish list for a really long time. And I just did a bunch of canning of things from the garden. And it just got me really wishing for these. So I went and finally snagged them. So this is one brand of canning funnel. And what makes it good for canning, number one, this is a really large scoop on it. So this one says the scoop fills a half pint jar. So you can have 
Um, you can fill your half pint jelly jars with one scoop, which I really like the idea of that. It's got um, pour spouts on the sides and the front so that you can do it whichever way is handy for you. It's got a little thing to hook it onto the edge of your pot so it doesn't fall down in the pot. And supposedly the way that the tip is designed, it helps it to scrape the edges of your pot better when you're scooping things up. And this here is just another version of the same thing. This obviously is a jar lifter. And I'll tell you what, when I went to order this scoop, it had um, an, a set where you could get this with it for, I think, like only a dollar more. So, of course, I took it because I have one of these that's good and I have one extra one where the handles are broken. So I thought it would be good to add another extra. But this is just another canning funnel. Same idea, but this one's actually a little bit bigger. So the top line there is a half a pint. And so filled up to the very top, it would hold more than half a pint. And it does have measurement markings, which I really like. It has that same hook to hook it on the side of your pot and it has all the same features as far as the different um, spouts you can pour it out of and the tip that helps it to scoop the edges of the pot better. So I can't wait to try these out and see which one I like better. And then I've got some little prep bowls here, prep bowls. These are just little bowls that hold, I think about one cup. Yeah, these hold one cup a piece. I don't know if you can see that. They have markings on them for a quarter cup, a half of a cup, and three quarters of a cup. So they go up to one cup if you fill them all the way full. They have lids that can go on them. So these are good for prepping ingredients, whether you're cooking or canning or anything like that. This can make it go faster because you can get all your ingredients ready in these little bowls ahead of time. And they can obviously help you measure. And also because they have the lids, you could get your ingredients ready ahead of time and stick them in the fridge if you had time maybe in the morning to prep some vegetables and you weren't going to be cooking them till dinner time or something like that. Um, if I'm making videos, this is going to help. If I'm doing a canning project or some sort of a, a cooking project, I can get my ingredients all set out ahead of time so that it makes it easier for me to video it. I saw some people raving about these cups and so I had to have this set. And next I got this. Now I have one of these, this exact same thing that I've had for many years. My son is a senior in high school and I'm pretty sure he was a baby or a toddler when I got it. And it's just finally starting to, like the printing is starting to um, scrape off a little bit. It's just seeing better days. And so I decided it was time to replace it. So what this is, is it's a measuring cup for, so you push this down and it makes like a squeegee cup. So it's great for measuring like more solid ingredients like peanut butter, um, shortening, things that are sticky like honey or molasses it's great for measuring um, mayonnaise and uh, sour cream and all those kind of things that are a little bit harder to measure because it squeegees it right out so what you do is you move this down to the spot where you need it it's got measurements for teaspoons tablespoons cups and milliliters and you just move it down to the level you need it at like if you needed a half of a cup you would put it right even with that half of a cup line, fill it up and then squeegee it out. And these things work awesome. I really, really love them. I've had a couple over the years. Like I said, I've had one for many, many years, um, well over 10 years, and it's just now starting to need to be replaced. And then the next thing I got here is a manual can opener. Now it's really important to have in emergencies, obviously, if you use an electric can opener. I don't use an electric can opener right, opener right now. So we always have manual can openers on hand. So, but this is the kind that opens the can without leaving a sharp edge. It just basically unseals the can and makes a nice lid that you can lift right off and you could even place it back in and you don't have to worry about cutting yourself. I have a can opener like this and I let Mr. Wicked Prepare to use it out in his workshop because he needed to open some cans and he was amazed. He'd never used a can opener like that before that leaves no sharp edges. So I thought I would grab him one of his own. I got this and now I notice this actually has features that mine does not have. So guess who's going to get this nice new one and guess who's going to get the old one out in his workshop. So it obviously just opens the cans, but it also has right here, you see this little thingy, you can push it and it operates these little pinchers over here, which can help you grab the lid and pull it off if you don't want to touch it with your hands. Like I said, it's not sharp, but maybe it's gooky or something I don't know you just don't want to get food on your hands it's just easy to grab it and then the other thing it has is this right here is a hook to grab the pull tabs on cans and you know a lot of my smaller cans of freeze-dried food have these pull tabs um, 
sometimes soup cans and things like that have those pull tabs. So this is an easy way to do that. And some people have a lot of trouble with those pull tabs. So I'm going to really appreciate this. And next, this is just a roll of labels. If you have seen the label printer that I use, um, we use it to label a lot of things. I label my canning jars with it. We label our freeze-dried food inventory as we put that away. These are round labels for it. You probably can't really see the actual round shaped label, but it's a big circle label. And I'm going to use this to make custom labels for the tops of my canning jars. I use um, square or rectangular labels on the fronts. And I like to label my canning jars on the front so that I can see the front of the can when I'm looking at the shelf. But I also wouldn't mind making a nice um, round label for the tops and especially for some spice jars and stuff that I'm going to be storing in drawers. I'm going to be looking down on them. I'm going to use these circle labels. And then I got this, which is a cup slicer. These are super duper handy and these are really helpful when you're prepping a lot of food like for canning or for freeze drying. So what this is, is this is actually a protective cover and you can see these blades. So it slices food. Now it says right here um, not to use it on really hard foods like carrots or radishes, obviously raw carrots or radishes. Um, so this is good for foods like strawberries, like mushrooms. I think you could use it on bananas. Um, it would be good for kiwis, for hard boiled eggs, for lots of types of foods like this. So when I need to slice a lot of foods, you just put it down over the food like that. The food comes up all sliced into the cup and then you can just dump it out into your um, dish or onto your freeze dryer tray or whatever you are needing to have sliced food for. And then the last um, kind of food prepping and preservation tool that I got back here is these flexible cutting mats. Now I love flexible cutting mats because they're so thin and they're easy to store anywhere. So I have a set of these in um, my emergency cooking kit. It's like a kitchen in a box that I can grab and go because I needed everything to be able to fit in the box. Um, I keep them in my camping stuff, my camp kitchen, and I also keep them in my kitchen. They're handy because they don't take up much space, but you can, they're flexible. So you could chop your veggies all up and then bend them into like a funnel shape to put them right into your pot or your dish or whatever you're doing. But I thought these were really cool because besides being um, good flexible mats, they have all this interesting information on them, which I thought was cool. So this one shows you Julianne fine julienne, large, medium, and small dice. It's showing you what size um, things are supposed to be when a recipe calls for that um, type of cutting. And then it also down here has a, like a ruler with inches and centimeters. So if you have a recipe calling for you to make a two inch piece of something or to roll something out to a certain length or width, this will be really handy. This next one has some measurements that you might see probably on old time type of recipes is where I've seen these. So I thought this was really cool. Um, like a thumb, like I've heard of a thumb of butter, like in some of my grandmother's recipes and things like that. So it's got thumb tip, thumb, palm, fist, handful, and two handfuls. And on some of them, different types of food, um, it's a different amount for a handful of that type of food. So that I thought was really cool. It also has the measurements. It's got centimeters. And then inches up here. And then this last one I didn't really find as useful as the other ones. It just basically talks about different types of knives and what they are good for. I feel like I know what I want to use my knives for. I don't really feel like this is um, information that I really needed. But it's still a nice design on here. And it's still a good cutting mat. And it also does have the measurements. So I thought this was a really cool set. And then back here, I've got a couple of containers and these are gasket containers. So these are plastic bins. These are 20 quarts. They do come in a larger size as well. And they're gasket containers. So what that means is you can see here on the underside of the lid, there's this channel that the box edge would fit into. And it's got this soft gasket material here. So the box will fit into this. It'll pressure up against this and it will then close shut with the latches and that means that these containers are moisture dirt and pest resistant notice it does not say proof it does not say moisture proof there is one kind of box that i sometimes get that says waterproof it's another gasket box i've you, you may have seen it if you've seen some of my videos like i put my blackout box in a box like that i believe and my emergency cooking kit is in a box like that to protect it from water because we've been doing a lot of thinking lately about um, protecting food and preps and things from flooding. Now, we've never had an issue with flooding here at our house, thank goodness. 
but I know a lot of people, especially lately, have had issues with flooding, um, with hurricanes and different types of storms. So it's good to think about how to protect your food and your preps from that type of thing. Some food containers are going to be naturally waterproof or water resistant. Cans like this, for instance, they're completely waterproof. They're sealed up. They'll actually float usually because the contents of these are very light. As long as they're not in water for an extended period of time, which would cause them to rust and eventually rust through the can, but that would be a very long time. If they're in water for a short amount of time, they're fine. Things like mylar bags and canning jars, as long as they're well sealed, they should be um, pretty much waterproof. If you store things in buckets, five gallon pails, use gamma lids. That's going to be a lot more waterproof than the regular lids you can get. Of course, depending on what's caused the flooding, what type of substances could be in the flood water, because it could be, um, you know, contamination, waste, it could be fuels and things like that. You may or may not be able to save your food regardless of what you have it in and depending on how desperate you are for the food. But it's good. It's a good thing to think about. I do have people occasionally who say there's no point in prepping because, you know, they know such and such a person who lost all of their preps because their house burned down or their house got washed away or whatever happened. Um, and yes, unfortunately, that can sometimes happen, but you're much more likely to need your preps than you are to ever lose them in that way. That's a very small, small percentage. So it's not a good reason not to do it. It is a good reason to have a bug out bag, a grab and go evacuation kit so that if you do have to leave your house, you at least have some supplies, some things with you, some food, your important papers and documents. And it's also a good reason to make sure that your house and its contents are insured. Make sure that you've documented, photographed, videoed all of the contents of your home, including your preps. Talk to your insurance agent, see what you need to do about making sure those things are covered. And then back here, of course, I've got all these canning jars. Now these are all half pint jelly jars. I did a bunch of canning lately using a lot of half pint jars and realized I was getting low. So I like to have all sizes on hand. I got some ball jars first um, and then I ended up getting the mainstays because the mainstays if my store has them in stock or if I'm able to order them, they are the cheapest canning jars I can get. And so far, I really haven't had issues with them. So I will grab them. Other than that, I either get my jars from uh, ball jars from Walmart or I order Azure Standard brand jars from Azure Standard. Because whichever one is cheaper is what I go with. But I did just preserve a whole bunch of peppers from our garden in a bunch of different ways. I did cowboy candy. I did pepper jelly. I did canned peppers. I did freeze dried peppers. And they all went into mason jars. So I did have to restock. So make sure if you haven't seen that yet, you check that video out next after this one. And here I've got some freeze dried foods. Um, these are in number 10 cans, which are gallon sized cans. If you've been prepping for very long, you probably already know why freeze dried food is so amazing. Um, it's just got all the nutrients and got a much longer shelf life than any other type of food preservation. So I've got broccoli here. This is one of my favorite um, products because we love broccoli. It's super nutritious. And it's really the only way I'm going to have shelf stable broccoli. I did some broccoli cheese soup um, in meal in a jar, dry meal in a jar, just add water um, recently. So I have a video on that if you're interested in seeing how to do that. Um, and of course, I also use cheddar cheese for that. So here's the cheddar cheese. This is another thing that we love and we eat a lot of and we wouldn't want to be without it. And it's you're not going to really get it shelf stable any other way besides freeze dried. And then I grabbed some raspberries. These, these were all on sale this month. So that's why I grabbed what I did. These are favorites of ours and I grab them when they have the highest discount. We do have a deal alert system. If you want to know um, what the best deals are on freeze dried food, when there's sales, when there's coupons, things like that, how to get the best deal, you can text alert to the number that I'm going to put down at the bottom of the screen. And we will let you know as soon as there's a deal. But raspberries is one of our favorites. Once again, um, not something I could really have shelf stable any other way because this is not jam. It's not a pie filling. It's literally just raspberries. So they are delicious and they're nutritious. I can use them in desserts. I can use them in smoothies. We can just eat them as a snack. Um, I can powder them and use them as a natural food coloring and food flavoring. They're really awesome. And then I got some diced beef. So these are like little cubes of beef like you would put in beef stew or stroganoff. Um, things like that. I also just did a beef and barley soup mix meal in a jar that was delicious that used this beef. And so I am restocking a lot of the ingredients I used in my soup um, meal in the jars. 
Now these cans are great because they do have a 25 year shelf life. They're all non-GMO. Um, they don't allow any kind of mRNA technology in their food, anything like that. And like I mentioned, they're all like single ingredient foods. Like that's just raspberries. That is just broccoli. Like there's no um, additives, preservatives, no sugar added, no nothing. And then up here, I just got this bin with a bunch of these Just Add Water um, emergency meals. So they did not come in this bin. This is a bin that I had that I just put them in just to keep them contained. Um, there is a bucket you can get full of meals like these, but this is just my own way of storing them. We like to keep these on hand for emergencies. They're great emergency meals because all you have to do is add boiling water and you're going to have a warm, um, yummy meal. And you can even do it right in the pouch. The pouch will stand right up and you can just put the water right in there and let it set till it's done. But we also use these when we're traveling a lot. We carry these in our suitcase because they're very light and they help us to save money when we're traveling and help us um, eat a little bit better because we're not going to restaurants and eating all that fried food and extra bread and all that stuff. The meals I've got here, I've got the creamy beef with rotini pasta, a chicken spinach, Alfredo. This one's upside down just for space reasons because they're wider at the bottom. So if I alternate them, I can fit more. So this is a cheesy chicken and rice, Southwest chicken and rice, teriyaki chicken and rice, creamy mashed potato bowl, and a butter chicken also with rice. Now these were on sale also. So these were a special deal, a special pack. So it's seven meals. And I think I paid right around $70 for it. So that's about $10 a meal, which for this type of meals, um, freeze dried emergency meals um, is a really good price regardless. But these are actually larger than most of the other brands of meals. These are three serving meals, which let's be real, most of the meals that are two servings, people get really one serving out of them. So these three serving meals usually feed the two of us. So unless you have a really small appetite, you're not going to probably get three servings out of it, but you're going to get more than most other brands of meals. So we just used a lot of these because we were traveling for quite a while um, this fall. And so I was going to do a restock and this was a really good deal. And I'm also going to probably use some of these. I'm already starting to think about the holidays and I like to put together um, kits of, you know, preparedness items for some of my family members. And I have used these meals for them before and they really, really enjoy it. As some of you might have heard, there was a pretty big nationwide chicken recall over the last few weeks. The USDA found a sample of poultry processed by Bruce Pack, a chicken processing company that um, contained listeria, forcing the company to recall all of the meat that it had recently processed and sold. There is a long list of companies who are affected by that recall with products being sold by everyone from Amazon, to Walmart, to Target, to Trader Joe's, all these and many more. This did affect Thrive Life because they get some of their pre-cooked chicken from Bruce Pack, which they then freeze dry in their own facilities. Thrive Life, of course, has their own rigorous testing that they do on their products, but because some of the chicken was originally from Bruce Pack, it still fell under the recall. As soon as the details were released by the USDA, Thrive Life jumped into action out of an abundance of caution. They stopped shipping any and all chicken products from their warehouses just to be absolutely sure that they were not going to be sending out any of the recalled products until they had time to sort out all the facts of the situation. Once they realized that they did have some chicken affected by the Bruce Pack recall, they immediately began to contact any customers that had been sent that freeze dried chicken, asked them to dispose of it, and then they have begun automatically issuing credits to their accounts. Thrive Life also has a page on their website right now that gives all the details, has all the lot numbers that are affected, all listed right there. I will put a link to that down in the description below as well. Not every can of chicken is included in the recall, so definitely be sure to check the code that's on the bottom of the can and see if it matches any of the codes listed on the website. I'll have a link to that website down below in the video description. I have to say Thrive Life's response to this has been top notch, which is no surprise to me because they're just that kind of a company. The customer comes first, no matter what to them. So if there's one bright spot in this recall, it's during situations like this where you can see the difference in how different companies react. Often it's left up to the consumer to discover the fact that there's a recall find their receipt, contact the manufacturer, and go through the hassle of requesting a refund themselves, which I know many people don't do that. They just toss the recalled product and eat the cost. In this case, Thrive Life is taking care of all of that. 
They're going way above and beyond what they're required to do. That's one of many reasons why they're the type of company that I like doing business with and feel good about buying from, which is harder and harder to find these days. There are many other products and companies out there that are included in the recall and affected by this. So definitely do some research. Think about what you've purchased recently. I'm going to put a link directly to the Bruce Pack website down below also so that you can take a look after you're done watching this video. Bruce Pack is a family owned company that's been around since 1949 with facilities in Oregon and Oklahoma. And I think they too are doing everything they can to rectify the situation as quickly as possible. Next, I've got this Green Surge um, Greens Superfood Powder. Now, I'm a big proponent of using powdered items to be able to pack more, um, more into your prepper pantry, really, in a smaller space. So this is obviously a nutritional supplement, and it can be used every day, but it can also be used in emergencies to kind of supplement your diet and make sure that you are getting what you need when you're living on limited food. So so this has a lot of powdered greens ingredients, but it also has probiotics and inulin blend. This is probiotics and inulin is a prebiotic powder. This is actually something that I take as a supplement um, pretty regularly by itself. So the probiotics and the prebiotics are going to work together to really, really work on your gut health. And then it's got all of these other um, powders and extracts and things like that in it. And this one is keto friendly. So it's something that I don't mind using. So, so this is just something I like to keep on hand, use um, daily for my health, but also make sure I have a good supply so that I could be using this if I was in an emergency situation, living off of my food storage entirely, just to have a little more nutrition. The only thing about this one, I liked everything about this, but I do wish it came in individual packets, um, like my Ruby drink. I love that these come in individual serving packets. So if I wanted to throw it in my bug out bag, in my vehicle, places like that to make sure I always had it. This one is um, fruits and vegetables, pure fruits and vegetables, but it doesn't have like the probiotics and things like that that this other one has. But I use both of these in different ways. It's amazing if you dry and powder greens and fruits and vegetables, how much of them you can fit into a tiny space once they've been powdered because you've removed all of the water and all of the airspace. And next, I've got a few pet things up here as well. Um, don't forget to prep for your pets if you have them and any other animals you have, especially if you have livestock. I mean, that's also important to be prepared for them as well because that's something that you depend on. Um, and our pets are part of our family. So we make sure that we have preps for them just as well as we do for ourselves. So you will quite often see items for our pets in my hauls because we have a lot of pets. We have six dogs. Um, and a bunch of cats and ducks and chickens all kinds of animals so and we definitely prep for them because that's our responsibility but what i have right here is just a flea medication these are look like they've been through better days because walmart actually put these in a box with a whole bunch of canned goods i don't know why they do that but um but so they got kind of beat up but they're still intact inside i checked these are a flea treatment that's like an instant it's a pill that you give them and it instantly kills, starts killing all the living fleas on them within half an hour. It's good to um, get a head start on an infestation, but this doesn't provide any residual things. So you'd still want like a treatment that lasts and kills the eggs and things, or you would have to repeat this treatment every few days for a certain amount of time to get it to kill all the fleas. But I like to keep a lot of different treatments on hand um, for fleas and things that our animals could get, um, worms, anything like that. You want to make sure if you're in an emergency situation and you can't get them to the vets or you can't get to the store, you have things to deal with anything that could arise. And then the other thing we have here is a bag of um, freeze-dried pet food. And I say pet food because this can be for dogs or cats, which is one of the things I really like about it because like I mentioned, we have both. Um, freeze-dried food for pets has all the same benefits that it has for humans. It has superior nutrition, superior shelf life. This is real whole food with all of the bionutrients still included in it. And this is a really highly rated food also. We like to keep these in our bug out um, gear, in our evacuation supplies, um, because it is light. It does have a long shelf life, so we don't have to worry about how long we put it away for. It doesn't have as long of a shelf life in this bag as like the human food has in the cans. Cans are the gold standard for storing freeze-dried food. So if we wanted this to last longer than like two years, we would repackage it as soon as we got it. However, we rotate through things so that, so two years is okay for us. 
We do um, feed this to them so that they will be used to it and so they can get the benefits of it every day. We don't just store it. But because this is a really good food and we have a lot of animals, um, it's a little cost prohibitive for us to feed this exclusively. So we use this as like a supplement, a topper, and a treat so that they get some of the benefits of it and they are used to eating it and their bodies are used to eating it um, in the case that we do have to give it to them exclusively. And then we use it for storage and we use it, like I said, for um, bug out and evacuation kits and things like that. And you know how much I love to get a discount, get things as cheap as I can get them or even get things for free. So we found a program where we've been able to get a bag of this food for free every month um, for the last several months. And we can for up to a year, which is totally awesome. And it also gets us discounts and better prices on a lot of holistic um, pet care products that we use for our pets. So as a multi-pet family, it has been such a blessing to be able to save money like that. If you want to know a little bit more about how we've been able to do that, you can text free pet food to my number down at the bottom of the screen and I will send you a little bit more information about it. So back here I have got, I grabbed another Nesco digital canner. Now I have one of these that I've had for years and years. You might've seen me use it in some of my canning videos. I really love it because it is super easy to use. It's really, really easy to can with this. One of the only drawbacks to these Nesco canners is they don't hold as much. They don't hold as many jars. They hold four quarts. Um, they hold five pints or, you know, 16 of the little four ounce jelly jars. So they are great for like doing small batches or if you're doing a big batch in your big canner and you have just a few jars of overflow. But what I found over the years is there's actually some people who run, you know, multiple Nesco canners instead of their stovetop canner or in addition. Um, they'll run two or three Nesco canners to do a batch of canning. And I started to really, really think that that was a good idea. I've been using my Nesco canner a lot more lately because my stovetop canner, which I do really like, but it needs a new seal. So I'm not able to use it right now until I get that replaced, which we can do easily. We just haven't gotten around to it. So I've been using my digital canner a lot. And I finally decided I saw that it was on sale for a really good price. So I finally decided to take the plunge and grab a second one. So with two of these digital canners, I can actually do more jars than I can do in my one stovetop canner. Or if I'm doing really big batches, like a whole lot of canning one day, I could be running all of them and doing a whole lot at once. These are pretty cool because you can also use them as a pressure cooker. So they're kind of like an instant pot and a canner. So I love it when I can combine more than one appliance into one because it's a little bit space saving. And then over here, I've got, these are a couple of things from Amazon. These are little mini single serve honey packets. They are raw, unfiltered honey. So they're good, um... Honey is really great for not only for eating, but also for some medicinal uses. And I love having individual packages of things because I could take it when I travel. I can pack it into little kits. I can pack it into like MRE packs if you wanted honey for to sweeten your tea or coffee or you wanted like a just a boost of energy from the carbs. These, this is the size of the packets. They're super cute. They're also good to throw in your first aid kits because honey is really great for things like sore throats and coughs. And it's actually also good for treating wounds. Um, manuka honey is even better. This is not manuka honey, but you can get manuka honey packets. I have both and I just needed some more of the regular honey. But these are even great to keep in your purse or anywhere like that. If you like to have honey in your tea or anything like that in case you're out of place and they don't have honey for you. Then I just got, um, this is something that we keep on hand all the time. We buy a lot of this. We keep extra. Um, this is one of our favorite vitamin C products just for like immunity. And this time of year, it's really important to make sure we have plenty of this on hand. This one has a timed release. So it's easier on your stomach because sometimes I have issues with my stomach. If I take a lot of vitamin C or even just a lot of vitamins in general all at once, I have to space it out. So this is something that we like to take. And it's really important to keep a good supply of any supplements that you like to take and rely on in case you cannot get them from the store, especially immune boosting ones. Because if we get into a situation where medical care is harder to find, harder to get to or anything like that, we want to make sure we stay as healthy as we can. Over here, I've got this insulated bowl. I grabbed this um, because I'm always looking for insulated containers for when we prepare meals like these you can prepare them right in the bag and when we do that we put them in um we put them in a side of like a insulated lunch box that works like a koozie to keep the heat in so that they prepare better but if we're just making one at home because we do sometimes use them for um 
like a quick meal, if it's just the two of us and we just need something really quick, we will eat those at home because at $10 or so to feed both of us, that's actually cheaper and easier than going out even for fast food. But it's best to have an insulated dish and I have a hard time finding one that's the right size for these meals because they're usually a little bit too small. So I found this one and this one looks like the perfect size. So I, I was excited about this. It'll also be good to use around the holidays and stuff that are coming up so I can serve side dishes and keep them warm. If we really like it, we might end up getting more of these. It would be good for emergencies if you're in a power outage and you don't have um, a good way to heat your food, an easy way to heat your food, and maybe your house is cold if it's a winter power outage, this can keep your food warm while you're eating or serving multiple people. The one thing I did read was I read a lot of reviews and a lot of people had issues with water getting trapped inside the lid when they washed it. So it does warn you on the um, instructions that came with a little sticker not to put it, not to submerge it in water and obviously not probably put this part in the dishwasher. But so I'll probably be really careful when I wash this. I don't know if they've corrected it. Um, maybe in later models, sometimes they'll correct things. But just in case, I'm going to be careful with the lid. But I'm excited to find this size of insulated dish. And then I got this pack of ramen. You can see it's open because I actually had to open it up and try it out as soon as it came. Because this is a chicken and mushroom flavor ramen. And that used to be my favorite flavor of ramen, which I know ramen is not very healthy. I hardly ever eat it. Obviously, I try to eat low carb. So as far as eating packaged ramen like this, very, very seldom do I eat it. But sometimes if I'm just having, if I'm sick and I need some comfort food or something like that, this is one of the things that I turn to. And they, the regular generic ramens don't make the chicken mushroom flavor anymore. So I was looking for chicken mushroom ramen and this was the only one I found. So I wanted to open it up and try it and see how it was. And actually it is really good. I did make one packet and try it. Um, just to see how it was. And then I will put the rest of this away for a while because like I said, I don't eat it very often. I might end up taking, I bought myself some keto low carb ramen noodles for when we do our um, ramen, our own make your own ramen cups. And so I may end up taking the, the flavor packets from these and using them with the keto ramen noodles and letting the kids use these noodles with whatever seasonings they want. But I was pretty excited to find um, a good chicken mushroom ramen again. And then back here, I've got some canned, more canned goods. And of course, these boxed broth. I've got a lot of chicken broth. I've got a bunch back here in this back row, those um, uh, cans of chicken broth. And then I've got some of the boxes. They make it in two sizes. So they've got 48 ounces or 32 ounces. But we do like to keep broth on hand for a lot of things. Um, I also keep bouillon. I'm a big fan of powdered items in the prepper pantry for space saving and for longevity, like shelf life, you can keep a lot more broth worth of bouillon in a much smaller space than you can with liquid broth. But, but the downside of that is you need to have water stored or a water source if you were in an emergency. So I store both. It's part of having a well-rounded preparedness plan and we have the space. But I do like to have the exact size of broth container that I need for a recipe when I can. So that I don't have leftovers I have to store in the fridge and worry about it going bad. Or if you're in an emergency situation, you might not even have refrigeration. So I buy different sizes so that I can use just what I need. These are easy to make any kind of a meal out of just dumping in a pot with some noodles and some canned or freeze dried vegetables and chicken. And you can have a soup. I took a box of broth like this and put it with a packet of instant mashed potatoes and a can of diced potatoes. And I think a can of... Uh, evaporated milk maybe and it made a really great potato soup. I also needed beef broth but my store was completely out of the great value beef broth and I, I like the great value fine. I didn't want to pay extra for the Swansons that they did have in stock so I'll get it later. I also have some canned soups here. Um, mostly cream of chicken. There's a couple cream of chicken with herbs and I do have some more of these coming. There was a deal. There was a good deal um, on Amazon on different Campbell soups. I mostly use these for cooking. I think they're great to have on hand because they're also really, you can make a pretty easy shelf stable meal with these if you just cook up some noodles or some rice and stir in a can of soup and some cans of meat and veggies. You can make yourself a nice casserole or a skillet dish. But because of the special deal, they only allowed me to order a certain number of uh, cans on that deal. So I got some single cans. I think I have some four packs coming and then I got a couple of the cream of chicken with herbs because I like this. I have some recipes that use this and I feel like you could use this pretty interchangeably. Anyways, but this is an item that I use a lot, so I do like to stay well stocked on it. 
And then over here, I just have some more personal care type of items and health. So I've got shampoos and conditioners, a bunch of those. This is definitely something you want to stay stocked up on in case you can't get them from the store and think about supply chain issues. There might be nothing else going on in the world, but if our supply chain breaks down, you may not be able to get the products that you your family's used to using. So these are just cheapo shampoos and conditioners, but that is what we use most of the time. Um, I think they work just fine. I'm one of those people, there are certain things I will pay more for and certain things that it's just not worth it for me. And then up here, I've got four of these um, uh, antibiotic ointment. These are just from Walmart and these little tubes are, I think they're $1.24 now and they used to be like 89 cents. So they're cheaper than the Dollar Tree, but now they're just barely cheaper. But I actually really like the little cheapo tubes because they're very small. So you can tuck them in any type of first aid kit, um, keep them in your car, keep them anywhere. But I love that they have the pointed tip because this way I can just squeeze a little bit of what I need right onto a bandage or even right onto the wound itself. If you don't mind doing that, like a lot of times my my kids and my family members will have their own personal little tiny first aid kit with their own tube of this. So, you know, depending on how you feel about that, I'll squeeze it right onto my boo-boo sometimes. But I do like these small, inexpensive um, nozzle tip antibiotic ointments. And we needed a restock, so I grabbed four of them. I wanted to take just a minute to show you one thing that we just added to our prepping supplies that won't fit up on my counter, and it is a shelving unit. Like many people, I mean, one of the biggest struggles that people face when it comes to being prepared is finding a place to store everything that they need to store. So we are always adding a new shelf if we ever can find space. And I wanted to share with you a couple of things that we do when we get a shelf. Um, so a shelving unit like this, this shelving unit came with five shelves, I believe. And usually the amount of shelves that come with a shelving unit leaves really big gaps in between the shelves if you use it like they have it. And so I find that creates two problems. Either you have a lot of space above the items you're storing that's empty space and that's just wasted space, or you're stacking items on the shelves to make the best use of the space. And that makes it really difficult to get things on and off, keep things organized and keep things from toppling over. So when we get shelving units like these, we will buy an extra shelf, an extra set and use the extra shelves to add extra shelves to our unit. We have found in the past that it's usually less expensive to just buy a second shelf than it is to try to order extra shelves from the manufacturer. And then when we are setting up the shelf, we will take either the type of items that we're gonna store on the shelves or the type of containers that we know we will be storing items in on the shelves and use those to space out the shelves. So we have shelves that are just the right height for storing the items that we want to store. In some of my other food storage areas, I might take um, bottles or cans or boxes or packages of food that we're going to store and place them on the shelf so that we can get it just the right height for those items. So here we've got a shelf that's set up to store a double stack of this type of box that we use a lot. This shelf can store a double stack of these boxes, one of these boxes, or one of these bins that we also use a lot. This shelf is the perfect height to store items like this. This is another shelf that's made for double stacks of these boxes. And we also have a triple stack of these um, shallow document boxes. Now leaving um, little extra space at the top can make it a little bit more difficult to get things out from the back of the shelf if you need to. We use a lot of bins that slide out to access other items. And the other thing I do is I like to keep a folding tray table, which you can get pretty inexpensively. I like to keep one of those in my storage areas because then if I need to, say I need to put new cans in the back of a row behind the older cans, I can just empty the row onto my tray table, put the new cans in the back and then replace the old cans. That is just a couple of things that we do to help with extra space. And I cannot wait to fill this shelf up. And finally, cereal. I have got cereal back here. Um, eat what you store and store what you eat. In my household, um, there are some people who eat a lot of cereal, so I always make sure I have a lot on hand. So I have got um, a lot of boxes of each of these kinds of cereal. These are two favorites in my household right now. I even really love the Cinnamon Life. I mean, that is just a delicious cereal and it's pretty nutritious too. Anytime you hear from people who have been through a disaster, who have been in a situation where their power's knocked out for an extended period of time and they can't get to the store, they're stuck in their homes eating the food they have in their home, 
what most people always say is they wish they had more snack foods and they wish they had more foods that could be eaten without needing to be cooked or needing to be heated because sometimes that's just what you need. And I think cereal really fits that bill really pretty well. A lot of people like cereal. You can get um, low carb cereals, you can get low sugar cereals, anything that you need for your diet. So just having some shelf stable milk on hand, whether it is liquid or powder, I like to keep both on hand. They both have different benefits and different purposes. This obviously has a, um, the liquid has a shorter shelf life. It'll keep for a year or two on your shelf. It will go a little bit past its dates, but by the time it gets a year past its dates, it's, it's kind of suffering. The powder, of course, has a much longer shelf life. And the benefit of having a powdered instant milk is that you can mix up just what you want. If you're like a single person or only one person needs milk or you just need a little bit for a recipe, whatever the case may be, you can just mix up what you like. And you don't have the whole rest of an open container that you need to refrigerate, which you may not have refrigeration. You can get these Tetra Pak milks in smaller, like eight ounce size, almost like a little juice box for a kid. Those are a little bit harder to find and more expensive because these you can get right at Dollar Tree. So you get a whole quart of milk for a dollar, actually a dollar twenty five now. And of course, you can eat cereals dry just as a dry snack if you didn't have any kind of shelf stable milk. And you can also mix them with some freeze dried fruits and some nuts maybe and make a snack mix or a trail mix that would make it an even more nutritious and satisfying snack. Now, if you want to store your cereal longer term, um, it'll store for a couple of years, probably right in the box. But if you want to store it longer term, what a lot of people do is put it into mason jars and vacuum seal it or use uh, oxygen absorbers. We go through it quickly enough that I do not have to worry about that. That's everything that we've added to our preps and our prepper pantry lately. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook. We would love to have you as part of our community there. Check out our deals and steals group and our meal in a jar group also. There's a lot of great stuff going on there. And take advantage of our text alert system to get heads up on some great deals. That goes right to me personally. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a pumpkin emoji down in the comments and check out this video next that I think you'll really enjoy. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.